See no evil, name no evil. That is the topic of tonight's byline. We are facing real evil in our world. The attack in the mall in Kenya, the church bombing in Pakistan, the 142 people killed by Islamists in the last week in Nigeria. Despite this, some in our media, our gatekeepers of information, our moral and intellectual superiors cannot call evil by its proper name. They cannot call these attacks terrorism. I want to take a look at just some of the headlines surrounding the attack in Kenya. 16 Kenya mall attackers killed or captured, president says. That's from CBC. Quote, Kenyan authorities say they ended the deadly standoff with militants who stormed Nairobi's Westgate Mall over the weekend with assault rifles and grenades. But Al-Shabaab says days after claiming responsibility for the attack that its fighters are still battling for control. Here's another one. Kenya mall attack. Three attackers killed as military operation tries to free hostages. That's from the Toronto Star. Powerful explosion sent thick smoke billowing from Nairobi Mall, where militants from Somalia's Al-Qaeda-linked Al-Shabaab group threatened to kill hostages on the third day of a raid in which at least 59 have already died. The Star story had this posted at the end of it. It said, with files from Associated Press in Al Jazeera. That's a little telling, but it also tells us that those two news agencies are not using the word terrorist. The biggest paper in the United States, the one that sets the news agenda across America, uses militant, not terrorist. One of the wire services that Sun Media subscribed to, uh, Reuters, calls Al-Shabaab a militant group. They will not call them terrorists. Kenya says defeated mall militants, five dead, 11 held. Reuters is owned by the Thompson family out of Toronto. And funny enough, the main family members live in the riding of Toronto Centre. I mention this because the Liberal star candidate of Justin Trudeau, who's seeking that riding, used to work for Reuters. Christia Freeland was a global editor for the news outfit. I wonder what she thinks of this attack. Are we talking about militants or terrorists? Can she call Al-Shabaab a terrorist outfit? That's a question that should go out to all the candidates in the riding, which has a large Somali population. Some in that population actually do support al-Shabaab, while others are working hard to stop the ongoing recruitment drive that the group runs in Canada, in Toronto in particular. A CBC, they mentioned that recruitment drive when their Washington uh, correspondent, Neil McDonald, took to the air last night. He portrayed al-Shabaab as a bunch of young people who were attacking Kenya because Kenya attacked their homeland. The United States considers Al-Shabaab terrorists. They are dead set on killing innocent people, and there is no room for them on the face of the earth. They are certainly ferocious towards those they consider enemies, meaning countries that have invaded Somalia hunting Islamists, like Uganda, where they bombed civilians, and now Kenya. America, too, has sent special forces and missiles into Somalia. McDonald. Did you hear that? McDonald said the U.S. considers them terrorists, but he wouldn't call them that. And as for all the background, he would tell you he's giving context to the story, explaining why al-Shabaab would attack Kenya. He discusses how Christian Ethiopia invaded Somalia. He says Kenya invaded Somalia. He doesn't give any context to any of this because he's too busy using those facts to excuse a terrorist group, or as he might call them, militants. McDonald never told his viewers that the government of Somalia actually invited Ethiopia to join their fight against Islamist rebels that were trying to overthrow the government. He never told his viewers that in 2011 it was the same when several of Somalia's neighbors, including Kenya, working through the multilateral African Union, sent troops to help the Somali government defeat the terrorist group Al-Shabaab. He doesn't say all of this happened after Al-Shabaab began kidnapping Western tourists and aid workers, or after they killed volunteers with the group Doctors Without Borders who were there to administer medical treatment to refugees created by al-Shabaab's civil war. He didn't tell you that al-Shabaab is a group that has confiscated food sent by foreign governments and international NGOs because in their twisted view, it's better that people go without than have them eat food from the infidels. That's the context from Canada's state broadcaster. Our media, CBC and elsewhere, are cowards. They're afraid to call a cowardly attack on civilians enjoying a day of shopping an act of terrorism. Terrorism is when you attack civilians. You use civilian targets like shopping malls, restaurants, airports, office towers, with the goal of sending a political message, with the goal of striking fear and terror 
into the rest of the civilian population. This attack on the mall in Kenya, the attack on the church in Pakistan, the attacks in Nigeria, they're clearly acts of terror, but the Star won't call it that, nor the Times, Reuters, AP, CP, CBC, or any of the other consensus medias. They just can't bring themselves to say it. Here's my challenge. Go to the family of Anne-Marie Deloge. Tell them that their daughter did not die in a terrorist attack. Go to the family of Nagub Damji. Tell them that their father, their husband, their brother, their son did not die in a terrorist attack. The claim that one man's terrorist is another man's freedom fighter is a cop-out employed by those that cannot see and name evil. They should be ashamed of themselves. And that's the byline. Our government is the government that listed al-Shabaab as a terrorist entity. We did that in 2010. And we have also passed a law to make it uh, specifically uh, a criminal offense to go outside of Canada for the purpose of terrorist training. Joining me now for further discussion on the cowardly media and those that cannot recognize evil is a man that clearly can recognize evil, Tarek Fatah, Toronto Sound columnist and a regular uh, speaker on this topic. Tarek. Uh, I, I really didn't think that so long after 9-11 that we'd still be having this debate of do you call someone that kills, ter uh, kills civilians in this manner terrorist? I can't believe we're having this debate. I think just calling them terrorists is not sufficient. Uh, they are jihadi terrorists. These are not the Red Army Brigade or some Japanese uh, unit that carried out terror or some Latin American group or the Sandinistas. These are specifically linked to the worldwide declaration of war on human civilization. And within, I call this the Black September after 9-11, uh, which was September 2001. Mindanao, South Philippines, Nigeria, uh, 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 Iraq, Pakistan, Somalia, Kenya, all of that happened within two weeks time. Number two, what Neil McDonald doesn't tell you is, or even mentions, that it was 26 Muslim Pakistani UN troops whose eyes were gouged out by Somali Islamic terrorists of that time that led to further UN intervention into that area. If you remember the Black Hawk Down uh, 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 yep. time at that time. The notion that African Union sending its troops into an African country is an act of imperialism or an act of colonialism can only reside in the very liberal, guilt-ridden, white minds of these reporters who for some reason have fallen in some sort of an infatuation with any terrorist Islamic group that you can mount. Just yesterday when Umar al Khadr was in the court, there was one reporter, a female reporter, who was tweeting how his dimples were showing. I know. There was Unreal. almost adoration of a mass murderer. And it, so it, all it, we it, can... It's unreal, but what do we do? Because we, these, these are the gatekeepers. I don't think most here, Canadians what you buy can this. Brian, even in your monologue, you didn't say they were jihadi terrorists. You were decent enough to say they were terrorists. I think we need to cross the line and call a spade a spade. This yeah, they're is, jihadis. They are jihadi terrorists. This is what it is. And unless and until the uh, left and the Islamist alliance is broken from some people from the left, we will continue to bleed. It's been a dozen years, a trillion dollars later. And all we do is, uh, what I say, swat mosquitoes around where no one wants to drain the swamps. The, uh, well, be, uh, beyond yourself and Terry Glavin, I can't think of people on the left that are willing to stand up and, and call out that alliance, uh, which boggles my mind. The only way it makes sense is that if both parties want to tear down Western civilization. Is it, and we do know, we do know that the Islamists, the jihadis, have said they want to tear down Western well, it's not. They haven't said it. It's a declaration of war established by the FBI, rolled out in 1991 at the Muslim Brotherhood meeting in Philadelphia. It outlined detailed steps. 
of how to infiltrate the United States government, the Canadian government, European governments, how to get into the media and play the guilt card where senior editors would never dare to utter the word uh, Islamic terrorism or jihadi terrorism. They invoke this guilt to such a degree that other than, uh, I would say, uh, Sun Media or the Sun newspaper, I can't read any and not to my, uh, uh, you know, from my left-wing point of view, I find it painful, almost as if uh, it's a betrayal. But where else would you find people willing to stand up to these jihadis? Look at the British Prime Minister. He had the goal to say that this action in Kenya and Pakistan had nothing to do with uh, Muslims. Uh, Tarek, they were stopping people at the door asking what is the name of Muhammad's mother. And killing them if they didn't know. I was hoping there would be one Muslim of character who would say, I'm not going to go out till you... Uh, uh, let. I am so deeply disappointed that in this act of terror, there was not a single Muslim in the mall who said, I will stay with my non-Muslim friends. I would prefer to die than to cop out and abandon my fellow human beings. And no one has pointed this out. What sort of cowards abandoned their fellow neighbors simply because they were Muslim and were given a fresh lease of life? Those people too should be charged, if nothing else, in the court of law, in the court of public opinion. You abandoned your colleagues and copped out. Is there anything people in this country can do to smack around those media outlets and look i i admitted one of our wire services well Reuters, i'll tell you they the they use they refuse to use the term terrorist they'll sometimes use islamist group but they won't use jihadi they won't use terrorist they wouldn't they, they would never combine islamic and terrorist together that would be a no-no here's what so you, hold, hold on you can't get any of the international wire services but i don't think the canadian public i think the canadian public sees through this and they call it what it is so what do you recommend people do to try and smack around their media outlets and their political leaders like Freeland and Trudeau? What do they think of this? She's the former Reuters editor. What do we do to smack them around? Well, I would suggest there'll be a time when ordinary Canadians will get so angry. They've tolerated this nonsense for a dozen years. They've given us Muslims the benefit of doubt and said, okay, you say jihad is an action of self-sacrifice. Uh, well, it's 12 years. When is it that the Muslim leadership of the mosques and the organizations is going to come out and say it's time to renounce the doctrine of armed jihad? And unless that happens, I hope politicians say you're personal non grata. We're not going to meet with you and we're going to cut your tax-funded charitable status as long oh. as you remain on the side of the Shabab. We, we, we had that with Isna in the last week. We had that with uh, Irfan last, week, uh, last year. There are There's 500 two, more. Two, two major charities that there are had 500 their 500 more. more. 500 more. And each one is visited by uh, sp uh, people, MPs without spines, who simply go there. Justin Trudeau is not the only problem. Justin Trudeau is... Uh, uh, the epitome of that cowardice. But it, yeah, it, it goes across the spectrum. Absolutely. Derek, we'll chat again soon on uh, bad terms again, I, uh, I'm sure. Thank you. Uh, speak to you again, my friend. Email me your thoughts on this. You tired of the media not calling a spade a spade? Byline at sunmedia.ca. More to come.